Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll explain you voltage control oscillator in complete details. Before I start with explanation, let me show you how many things that I'm going to cover in this video. See, first of all, I'll be explaining you basics of voltage control oscillator. After that, I'll explain you types of VCO. After that, I'll explain you working principle of voltage control oscillator. After that, I'll explain you characteristics of voltage control oscillator. After that, I'll be discussing about specifications of voltage control oscillator. And at last, I'll be discussing about applications of VCO. So let us begin this session with first agenda that is basics of voltage control oscillator. Voltage control oscillator is generating oscillations at output side. Here, oscillation frequency that is depending on input signal. So here you can observe we have voltage control oscillator in which at output side we will be having oscillations. Means you can have sinusoidal output or you can have square wave output that depends on which type of VCO that you use. If you have harmonic oscillator over here, then with harmonic oscillator, output will be sinusoidal. With this output, frequency is depending on input. So as you change input signal, output frequency will be changing over here with VCO. Basically, there are two types of VCO. One is harmonic and second is relaxation. See, in harmonic oscillator, output will be sinusoidal and with relaxation oscillator, output will be square wave and with square wave, if you connect integrator, then output will become triangular wave. In next video, I'll explain you IC566 that is based on relaxation oscillator in which I'll explain you square wave generation and triangular wave generation. Right now consider this, harmonic oscillator will be generating sinusoidal output and relaxation oscillator that will be generating square wave output as well as with relaxation we can have triangular wave output. In harmonic oscillator, there are varieties of oscillators like one can have RC oscillator, LC oscillator or crystal oscillator. Right. Now, I'll explain you working principle of VCO. See, normally with oscillator, we generate waveforms at output side with frequency based on elements connected in the circuit. If you have RC oscillator, then output frequency will be 1 divided by 2 pi RC. With VCO, we are changing output frequency based on input voltage. So here what we will be doing is, we will be using this capacitor as a varactor diode. So in varactor diode, value of capacitance that changes with respect to input signal. Let me explain you how. Here you can observe varactor diode that is PN junction diode. This varactor diode that we are connecting it in reverse bias means E type that we will be connecting it with negative terminal of battery and N type that we will be connecting it with positive terminal of battery means this PN junction is there in reverse bias. Here if you increase reverse bias voltage then width of depletion region that will increase. You can observe here, here we have increased reverse bias voltage. So depletion region width that is more over here, right. See capacitance of varactor diode that is based on reverse bias voltage. Let me explain you how. Basically capacitance equation that is epsilon naught epsilon r A by W where W is width of depletion region. So if you increase reverse bias voltage but obviously width will increase, right. So if you increase reverse bias voltage then width of depletion region that will increase and with normal doping this width is directly proportional to the root of voltage. So here if you increase reverse bias voltage width will increase and if you increase width over here capacitance will decrease right. It will be decreasing as per 1 by square root of voltage proportion and as I have told you see frequency that is 1 divided by 2 pi rc. So if capacitance is decreasing, then frequency will increase over here, right. 
so with voltage control oscillator we will be connecting varactor diode instead of capacitor where if you increase voltage as per this v in your output frequency that will increase as capacitance value that is based on epsilon 0 epsilon r a by w where w will decrease that will be resulting into increase in frequency right so that is how working principle is there and here you can observe characteristics of vco see with vco characteristic here if you increase v in right then frequency is also increasing linearly that you can observe over here right see this characteristic that depends on ic right it is not like every time characteristic will be like this only it cannot be linear every time but here i have shown you simple characteristic in which with respect to increase in v in i am showing you increase in frequency is happening right so we will be using vco in this vicinity only based on input output frequency oscillation will be happening right now essential parameters of vco that i am going to discuss over here and then when you use any ic for vco at that time you should be knowing parameters of that ic you can say specifications of that ic let me explain you those specifications one by one see first specification is tuning range it defines range of frequencies over which vco can be tuned i have told you in vco what we do we give input signal and based on that output frequency varies over here so what is the range of output frequency that is tuning range for example for 0.5 voltage to 5 voltage tuning range is 10 megahertz to 60 megahertz this is one example for particular ic one should know as we change input voltage output frequency changes so that range of output frequency that is tuning range right see next is tuning sensitivity or you can say tuning gain this is quite essential you need to know this see it defines change in frequency with respect to change in tuning voltage so as you change voltage how much frequency is getting change that is tuning sensitivity its unit is hertz per voltage means frequency per volt this tuning sensitivity that is not like it is constant over the all the frequencies right it may be varying with respect to different values of frequency like if you observe here this is linear characteristics so with linear characteristic you can say tuning sensitivity is constant as if you change voltage equal frequency is changing over here as this line is straight but practically this line may not be straight so in that case you will be observing tuning sensitivity that is changing with respect to different frequencies right so tuning frequency that is explaining you range of frequency but sensitivity explains you how much frequency will change with respect to change in input voltage right but that tuning sensitivity that may not be constant over entire tuning range it may be varying with respect to different frequencies right so you'll have to see the data sheet there is no fixed relation right in data sheet everything will be given to you first of all you should be knowing that then only you can use it in any application right see next parameter is very essential that is supply pushing supply pushing explains you change in output frequency with respect to change in supply voltage usually with ic we give supply right that will be vcc and minus ve supply that usually we use it with any ic right so if you have variation in supply at that time there can be variation in tuning frequency to avoid issues of supply pushing usually we use regulated power supply right see this parameter matters in high frequency vco in normally in terms of kilowatts of frequency it doesn't matter a lot right ideally it should be zero but it appears as per hertz per voltage right its unit is also hertz per voltage as we are having change in output frequency with respect to change in supply but if you have re regulated power supply over here at that time you can minimize this right 
so at very high frequency it matters a lot see next is load pulling this is very very essential load pulling always happens with every ic so one should know this see it is change in output frequency with change in load see here load may vary with respect to time right like you may be having load uh, which is functioning at different temperatures right so with respect to temperature some parameters may change even with resistor even you will be observing with respect to change in temperature there will be somewhat change in load so here if load is having some variation at a time there is a possibility that that oscillation frequency which is coming out from the ic that may change over here right so change in output frequency with respect to change in load this parameters also matters in high frequency vco ideally it should be zero but usually in data sheet it will be given as per maximum deviation from nominal frequency so in data sheet they will be saying like maximum deviation will be how much right and in application we need to see is it like that much deviation is allowed over here then only we can use that ic otherwise there can be serious issues when you go for particular applications right now last specification that is very essential that is spectral purity see spectral purity that one can observe it in time domain as well as in frequency domain in time domain we observe it as per jitter so jitter is what jitter is variation in phase like if you observe here ideal clock is there right so with ideal clock you can observe if variation in phase is there vertically red color that shows you variation in phase so that explains you jitter in frequency domain we have phase noise right and that we measure it in terms of dbc per hertz here dbc per hertz means what with respect to carrier if you have a variation in frequency then how much noise is there which is phase noise with respect to center carrier like here we have center carrier right so with respect to center carrier if you deviate from the center then you see phase noise that is appearing like this what it explains it explains that with this particular frequency this much phase noise is there right so spectral purity that is very essential usually what we do is we will be keeping that magnitude of center frequency so high so that those spectral frequencies those are not giving that much disturbance to our original signal otherwise that original signal may be distorted one and that may not be applicable to given application right so here all you need to do is you need to use center frequency with allowed phase noise with adjacent frequencies right here adjacent frequencies matters a lot if you go far then that noise is less over here right but adjacent frequencies are having bit more noise over here see at last let us discuss about applications see usually we use this in frequency modulators like if you have fm modulator ic even in that also we use voltage control oscillator in my earlier videos i have explained you phase lock loop ic in that ic also we were been using voltage control oscillator if you have seen that video in that block diagram also i have explained that right you can observe with this ic inside we use voltage control oscillator and this ic that is there for fm demodulation so here we have fm demodulated output and with this ic inside we use voltage control oscillator right one can use vco in function generator as i have told you we can have sinusoidal output we can have square wave and triangular wave output where we can use this vco in function generator in frequency synthesizer we can use it where we can multiply frequency by 2 we can divide frequency by 2 that operation can be done with the use of vco we can use it for clock generator even where we can generate square wave for clock right so that many applications are there i hope you have understood this still if anything that you like to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video